This is a review of solids and finding the volumes of these shapes before we start our integrals to kind of get the idea of what's going on here. So if you look at our prism here, you can basically break it into these cross sections here, where you have some area of the base here times a height. And so what this area of the base represents is this square. So you could think about this way. If this was, say, 25 square feet, so it would be a 5 by 5. And the height here, you can look at it and it does say 5 because we have 5 blocks. And if you think about it, if this one is 25 square feet, how many of them do we have? Well, there's 5 of them. See, by multiplying this by 1 foot, it turns it into a volume. So if I put a 1 here, this becomes 25 cubic feet. And so that is our actual volume of that 1 solid right there. But how many of them do we have? You guessed it, 5. So the volume becomes that 25 cubic feet times a set of 5 of them. So another way of looking at it is saying that we did 25 square feet times the 5 feet. That also gives us our, 25, our 125 cubic feet. So all that really means is that our volume is the area of the base times the height. So if you can find the area of the base, it will translate through with the height. So it works exact same way with a cylinder. The area of the base here is pi r squared, and then it's times the height. So if we did pi r squared times 1, then that right there would give us our volume, and then the height tells us how many of these we have. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there would be 8 of them here. So if this one was, say, uh, a radius of 2, then our area of the top would be pi times 2 squared, which is 4 pi. And our height here is 8. So how many of them do we have? Well, this is be 4 pi times 1 would be now 4 pi cubic feet times 8 feet. So we have an 8 set. So no matter what, it just becomes our volume is our base times our height, which becomes 32 pi. And then it would be cubic feet if we're talking about feet. If it's meters, it's cubic meters. So it's always just find the area of the base and then count how many you have. That's what the height represents. Even if it's oblique, it works the exact same way. So here we'd have one, two, three, four, five of these. And so all we need to find is the area of the base and times it by five. It would be the same way as just stacking it. So if this one was just like the top and we say that's 25 square feet, then by putting a one on it, it becomes 25 cubic feet. And how many of these do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So it becomes the same thing area of the base times the height, which gives us 25, Oop, it's not one, there are five of them, gives us 125 cubic feet. So all you have to do is find the area of the base, multiply it by the height, it tells you how many you have, and there you have it. So how it's going to look with us is this. You're going to have some area here, and it's going to have some thickness dx. Remember, we're going to make these very, 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 very thin. So now, if you think about it, the height is still the number that we have, right, that we're transferring through. So our integral is going to become 0 to h of the area times dx. So this is going to add them up. It's the same basic idea that we're talking about here. We're going to go from 0 to 5 here. Our area was 25 with the thickness of dx. And it will then add every single one in here. So it's going to find all the areas of all of those slivers and then add them up. So we take the area times dx. That makes it a very, very paper thin sliver. It's super, super thin, like as thick as a, as a hair you can kind of think of it, even thinner than that. Um, and so then it will add all of those up, giving us our sum. And there's our integral. And if we actually do solve this, a is a constant, we evaluate it, we end up with this, which would then become a h minus a times 0, which is a h. And so there it is. There's our volume, just like before. Over here we're using b for area of the base, but that's all our a represents. It's the area of the base, same exact formula. Right. So in the next section, we're going to be trying this. We're going to be making a shape. And so all you really have to think about is what is that shape 
what is the area of it, and you plug it in. The thickness is dx, and then we go from 0 to h. That is just our height as we translate it through our function. All right, so let's try this. 